All right, hey, hey everybody, I'm Eric. I'm making a game. It's called The God Killer. It is a 3D top-down puzzle-solving adventure game, Extravaganza. I'm just trying out adding Extravaganza on the end. I think it sounds like I'm working too hard, though. Got to, got to refine that pitch, that little quick or not so quick explanation of my game. Um, all right. So this is a, a live coding session. I've chosen to use it for visualizing wave samples, and they will be related to hand animations. I'm going to here. I'll just switch over to to the work screen so you can see what's up. Okay. So I've done some work here. I'm going to demo in a moment uh, for animating hands and. The next part of it is I want to have it synchronized to dialogue audio, and for that, I, I will want to do some analysis of the, the wave sample data to find the correct points uh, to synchronize different keyframes of the animations to. So I want to figure out a way to do this semi-automated, and a first step to do that is, is to get kind of a, a basic debugging tool which is to to show the wave sample data so I've taken it two steps away from the game code itself here uh, I'm often in a utility project and I'm making a debugging tool essentially it's a little bit like inception so first I was making a game then I was making a hand animation tool for the game and then I went one level deeper making a, today, making a debug uh, tool for the hand animation tool for the game. But, I'm not getting sidetracked. I'm not off on a tangent. It's all going to make sense. It's all a useful investment. Well, that's a little overconfident. Perhaps I, I may make a few more missteps before it's over. But with my current vantage point, it seems like these are good things to do. So let me do a demo of the hand animation tool. Um, it runs in the Unity editor. Let's have trouble with the word editor. Like I pronounce it a little bit extra articulated, like a like an eight-year-old would. Editor, edit, editor, 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 editor. If I just say editor, it just runs together. I'm trying to be more articulate. Uh, no, that's not quite. Articulate's overused as a word, um, but that is what I mean. Not not more um, intelligently speaking about things, but the actual syllables, the actual uh, phonemes coming out of my mouth. I would like to be more articulate. Um, so that's why I take a little time on words like editor, editor, editor. All right, that's stupid. So. Let me zoom this in a little bit more. Here's a hand gesture. I made a scrubber yesterday that moves between the keyframes. And to make sure that I've got good expressiveness in my hand animation system, I brought up footage of an old politician, a uh, presidential candidate, Hubert Humphrey, from the 70s. I think that's when he was running. No, I think it was, maybe it was the 60s. But anyways, I, I, I took a few frames of his video and looked at his, his hand motions, which were quite interesting to me. When he's talking, he's saying like, he's like, I went to every town and talked to every mayor, and and when he when he does, when he's making this sort of like, I'm a tough little man speech, he's stroking his thumb, and then he clenches his, his, his fist down like that. So I'll do it again. So, I went to every hall and every room with smoke in it, and I stroked my thumb until people listened to me, and I kept stroking my thumb, and eventually I had a thumb orgasm, and it was wonderful, and everyone was involved with it. Okay, so that was what I accomplished yesterday. 
this little thumb stroking thing. I, anytime I want to, I can bring up these hands and I can make make this thumb stroking motion as many times as I want. I can just keep doing that all, but I won't keep doing that all day. I'll move on to the next thing. And the next thing is analyzing the audio so that the animations are performed automatically in synchronization with the audio. And there may be an authoring aspect to that that I add on to it, but I would like some kind of baseline th thing where I just play the audio and the hands kind of move along with it and show gestures. This is all, uh, like I said, two inception levels deep, but it goes back into the game. There's a character which is two floating hands, and he must be incredibly expressive with his hands to pull them off. That's why I'm spending so much time on him. Um, but he's going to be an interesting character. This is all going to pay off. I promise. How can I make that promise? I really can't. I really can't. All these streams are cataloging my unfounded certainty at different points in the project. Uh, when you watch like conferences, people talking about what they learned on their projects, they have the benefit of hindsight and saying everything that worked for them. Uh, they also have the benefit of being selected by success. So nobody invites all the failures to come up and speak. And also all the people that screw up along the way, they get to uh, edit at the end and say this worked and that worked and I knew this and I'm a great smart person. Uh, what you get to see when you watch this stream is me running into brick walls occasionally and acting like an idiot thinking there won't be a brick wall there and yet I still run into it. Uh, so <coughs> I'm running towards either an open door or a brick wall at this point and I invite you to follow along with me to see which which it is, which it is. Okay. So next thing I want, and now you're going to see me get so much more mellow, so much more uh, introspective and quiet uh, as I switch to actually doing work instead of talking about doing work. I'll still talk about it though, a little bit. So. I want a new class. Oh, this is not. Don't know. So this is this is not even true. I would do a pretty friggin' good job of taking all the leap motion code out of this. So there's absolutely no reason for me to leave that copyright notice in there. There's like zero leap motion code left in this thing. It is a hundred percent original. Okay. So this stuff up here. Uh, what is this going to be? This is going to be... Wave Sample GUI. I've not made too much in the way of uh, GUI code, so I'll do a little bit of learning here. I did read a little bit about it. I did, I did do some research. Delete all this. It's now irrelevant. I might keep this if editor stuff. Yeah, actually this whole thing can go inside of that. Okay. Um... Look up a few things. Unity uh, GUI draw texture. That's that's the one. GUI draw texture.
It's hot. It's hot where I'm at. It's definitely pretty friggin' warm. I made the sacrifice of turning off my AC for better audio. Okay. So let me see. I want... Uh, Texture, and I want another one. Uh, highlight. Plain. Let's call it normal. So the chunks, um, they're going to be similar to what you'd see while looking at audio, uh, the audio wave. Let me just bring that up. Audition or a wave editor, audio editor. Yeah, oh, just just any old any old thing. Okay, so here's here's uh, so so here's here's like a wave file, right? Now, if I zoom in really really close, you see individual peaks and valleys, do 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 up and down like a big big zigzag. So what is this? So. A series of special challenges for you. Okay. So, so that is I prepared a series of special challenges for you. That's that's what that is, right? And the points where the amplitude's up higher corresponds to syllables. So you can almost even tell by looking at this and knowing what the line is, where the different parts of the word will be. He goes, I've prepared. See that big long thing there? I prepared. Right. Okay. So you might think, well, all you need to do to figure out where starts of syllables are is find, um, you know, f find, f find points where the volume gets high when it was previously low. That's almost right. I, I think that's almost right. The trouble is that when you zoom in on this, here's what's actually happening this thing doesn't represent loudness it represents changes in air pressure that end up creating sound so here the you could say the air pressure gets lower and here it gets higher there's a little device inside of a speaker that compresses air if you ever uh, have a chance to look at a speaker with the the, uh, the, the, the the covering taken off of it there's a little a uh, piston inside of it. Maybe it's not a piston. It's not, it's not a piston, but it's a thing that moves in and out like a piston. Uh, it's actually magnetic. The, the, the magnetism makes it go in and out. It, at least that's that's a, the most common way to do it. And it goes in and out, and it's, it's compressing the air, and it's doing it so fast that the frequency of that, that repeated compression of air translates to certain pitches to our ears um, so since this is really recording like differences in air pressure if I want to know the volume I need to basically take a section of audio here and average it and that'll give me um, the loudness over a period of time because I would be averaging the low points with the high points. Um, and then there's a little bit of a, a fix to um, this being 
in the negative area here. Um, so basically you, you square this whole thing and that's a way of kind of converting the negative values to positive values so that the average is more accurate then you take the square root of it at, at the end. It's called RMS and I'm forgetting what RMS stands for but if you ever want to do this algorithm of figuring out how loud sound is over a section you do an RMS uh, relative mean signal something like that um, so I've done that I have that code so my visualization I want to show the RMS chunks and they'll appear at regular intervals I figured out like a good interval size for the chunks maybe it's like something like that um, so I will not show just the sample data in my visualization I'll show the RMS chunks and it will basically take all the peaks and valleys out and I'll just show the amplitude and I have further analysis to do on the RMS chunks to determine well, where, where do the, the starts of words happen? Um, so here... I might make... I, I, I might make it be an algorithm, something like you are at silence here with your chunk, and you go from silence to past a certain threshold of, of volume, and that's the start of a syllable. And then I could say, I have... Pre and I probably missed like any other syllables inside of here for this particular guy who's a drawler and doesn't say like prepared, he says prepared instead of prepared, where there'd be two neat syllables. Prepared. I prepared. Oh, I'm wrong. He says I've and one syllable there. Pr is here. Paired is there. Okay, so I could have points for gestures at I've prepared the start of these dun, dun, and then maybe other points for gestures here 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 you know etc um, so we start with a visualization of the loudness as measured by RMS chunks and then uh, I'll get that visualiz visualization showing and then that will help me to um, analyze the results of my algorithm more effectively okay So I've got a normal chunk texture, a high, highlight chunk texture. These are basically things I'm going to draw with. Um, let me just make sure that I can draw anything at all. I won't try to make a whole algorithm here. Just, can I just draw a rectangle? see what that does. Um, I also have to make a texture. Or well, there might be another texture that's already suitable. Yeah, I feel like I can just add a quick texture just to try it out. So let me create an empty game object. Let's call this uh, voice sample visualizer. I just, I don't think it's as simple as this, but it's worth a shot. Um, okay, let me just, I gotta add this texture here. Just add some kind of texture that will show up.
I, I think I gotta add it to a canvas or something like that. I'm, I don't think it'll draw on its own. Okay. example. Oh. Oh, it's good. I got to hit play, right? Is that true? Let me try that. Yeah, okay, there's my texture. Okay. Uh, I might also be able to not be playing and see it in game. I can. I can just open up the game window. Okay, let me see if I can if I can change it. Um, without doing a replay. I should be able to. So uh, what's the same? 10, 10, 60, 60. Let me make sure I understand this thing. Okay, I can do rect with the position. Oh, the scale mode. like uh, the area of the screen. size of one chunk is going to be the width divided by the total count of, sam of uh, chunks. Right. 
see chunk no chunk count. Uh, amplitude's going to be like a value between 0 and 1. So we'll say amplitude times uh, this. Don't really need these to be assigned. I can just go like that. It's actually easier to read that. Times. And then this will be rounded. Okay. Say we get 10 chunks. decent textures. I mean, not like nice textures, but just ones that look like simple, solid colors. Very easy. Very, very friggin' easy. Uh, new. I can make it really small. Okay. 
just two dead simple textures, solid colors. That should be it. Don't even need to save it. And then... Well, my code is already working. I, I'm going to change my texture. But the other stuff that I wasn't even trying to test out, it just worked. Um, so let's set... That and set that. That's it. So let's see zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Working exactly as intended on the first try. Patting myself on the back. Okay. Um, next thing. I want to bring in some code that I already wrote to do the analysis of the wave audio. Um, let's see, where did I put that code? Let me take a look and if I didn't already copy it over. Not in here. Okay. This is probably it right here. Yeah. So I'll just get rid of that. And Only need this in the editor. So this is the RMS algorithm I was talking about. It's really simple. You just go over um, a range of samples. You you add the 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 square of each one. That's the thing where it gets rid of the negative numbers for you um, to a total, and then you divide that total by the number of samples that you you fed into it, and then you square root it. And the square root gets rid of. I guess the artifact of having squared it in the first place and all, all of these values up here. It's a really simple and useful function. RMS. Um, okay. So then I had some other code someplace. I was calling that.
So I'm I'm just putting in some sample files uh, inside of the, the persistent storage directory. There's an easier way, way for me to do this. I'm going to go back to doing it that way. Okay. So if I just... Add a audio clip property here. I won't have to load it from persistent storage. This is kind of like temporary code anyways, because I shouldn't try too hard on it. So if I add an audio clip, first off I need to put it in the right place. Find one of these that won't annoy me. The Delta is presented with yeah, the Dava may choose to be armed or disarmed. It's a shorter one. Yeah, the Dava is ensnared by one of the classic speed potion. Gollum Rebel. It gives the Dava a pickaxe. Eight. Copy this one. Something's not building. Okay. So here you should update and give me a little slot to fill. Uh, yes, you did. Good. So I'm going to go drop you in here. And I've got my audio clip assigned. It should be accessible. So inside of... Uh, I, think I, I think on... On validate? On validate. Private. Um, on validate. Load chunks for audio clip. Yeah, 
get to make my favorite, my very favorite kind of function, which is a static function. Of haunted right now because I know there's some code that I wrote that had a little more insight on doing this so I'm gonna go look that up instead of rewriting it from scratch or rewriting it from memory even though that might be more fun I, I want to reuse what I learned previously so let me think about What was I using RMS for? Oh, it was for uh, it was for interrupting dialogue. I was trying to find the the best place to interrupt dialogue. So there we go. this other thing here okay the so first thing is to get the samples thing is to load samples into chunks This is making some assumptions about the, the format of the, the file that should be in mono in 44100. So I'm just going to double check that inside of yeah. So let's do a force to mono.
pretty sure it's going to be 44100 again. Um, Okay, yeah, there's a whole bunch of extra logic in here that doesn't really apply to me. So let me just, let me just yoink that. Um, I want i i equals zero. I want it to be less than. Sample buffer length. Don't need that. Don't need that. Nice thing about writing editor code is that I just don't have to worry about um, optimizing it for performance. Just don't have to. So I can make a, a list here and just allocate memory each time I add to it. Does not matter. So chunks. Also means at the very end of the wave file, I'm gonna not add that to my list of chunks. It's not that important. So there'll be some tiny little bit of audio at the end that'll just be ignored. But the size of my chunks is really small, so it doesn't matter. Okay. So this will set the chunks to something different every time I change the, the wave file. Uh, here, my code should change a little bit. Uh, chunk count is now equal chunks length. Okay. I've been so lucky tonight. I feel like I, my luck might continue. It might just work the first time. Let's try it. It did not work the first time. Uh, nice thing is, I, I have like over here, there'll be another visualization I can compare to. Let me see, what's it complaining about? Index outside bounds of the array. Okay, no problem. 
So I, I, I already know what that is. Um, that would be... Reading past the end. Let, let me let me redo my stop by. Stop by equals. the edge case of an extremely small set of samples. Okay. Uh, extremely small set of samples passed. Okay. Ah, <laughs> yes. Second try. God, that's it matches too. So you can see the the source over here. You can see all the RMS chunks. Do, 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 do. <coughs> Give the dove a pickaxe, eight pressure plates, and a giant to form four pilot. All right. Damn. Did that in record time. I mean, I'm I'm sorry. I, you might be watching this and not be impressed at all. I'm <coughs> I guess I'm impressed with myself by my own standards. Which maybe are kind of low, you know. This this is actually telling you that uh, there've been many other times when I tried similar things and they took me much longer. But not this time. I'm going to celebrate with a cough drop. And a stretch goal for the session. My stretch goal. Let me think about it. I have to pick the right goal. So if I pick one, it's too much to get done. It will torment me. I'll be so fucked if I do that. So let me think. I'm thinking about what kind of analysis I can do on this and reach like a, a clear victory point. So I feel good about identifying the silence threshold. That's almost too easy though. So I did have some like different algorithms in mind. One was that I would take every peak and mark that as a potential place for there to be a gesture. That's not a bad goal. So <coughs> the algorithm would be If a chunk is higher than the previous and next chunk, mark it as a peak. Let me try that.
Got some kind of error there. Yeah, there it is. Okay, let me think about this. So that's that's like uh, it's kind of like too many. Too many places to have gestures. It gives the Delta a pickaxe, eight pressure plates, and a giant to form four piles of rubble. The plates must be held down to let a fagando. So suppose that I had gestures that were at the highest peaks. And I, I can figure out the exact algorithm for that, but just as a test. This corresponds like... It gives the Delva a pickaxe, eight pressure pits, and a giant... The first one would be a gesture of pickaxe. A pickaxe. And then maybe something over here. Give the Delva a giant to form giant to form four piles of rubble. The plates must be. Uh. Fiddling with something else for a moment. Um, I noticed that the visualization sort of lends itself to having the hands at the top of the screen. So I do something like that. At some point, I'll be able to. Potentially animate um, the hands while I have the visualization shown down below. Okay. Another thing that would be nice to help debug this a little bit is if I could click at different points here. And here, just like a little bit of audio from that point. I don't think that's hard. Uh, there's like some event for clicking on. Unity. Click on GUI draw texture.
Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's an easy way to do it. Um, okay. Let's do... Update. So it may not work unless I'm actually running running it in the player. But that, that's not bad. That's I, I can deal with that. Um, so the rectangle will always contain the vent because it's full screen. <coughs> so I really just want to check for the width, uh, let's say screen x equals okay. What it's gonna be float? Yeah. Okay, so then I, I scale screen x to a certain chunk. Nah, I don't need. I don't need to do that even. Let's let's do a uh, let's do it kind of like this. Let's say uh, sample percent equals screen x divided by screen width. That'll give me a number between zero and one. And uh, I'm gonna need an audio source as well. Um, source what why there not be an audio source what oh man okay audio source reserved keyword as I was getting trouble when I abbreviate Audio source play one shot. Huh. It won't let me play from a position. Oh, there's. Let me see. I can do like. I can do this. I can do.
Uh, I'm missing like some kind of property. Okay. No, not at a point. No. samples properly. Okay. Or I could just set time maybe. That might be easier for me. I think this nice helpful person plus one. Plus one. <clears throat> yeah. That's it. So, audio source time equals from, let's call this time. Okay. And, um, also I will set the clip here. scared you but it scared me too <clears throat> okay the only bad thing is it'll keep playing but I just want to see if it works first save that Weird if it worked here. I don't expect that to work. Okay. Hit play. What is making it move? That's something else. I, I, I can fix that. Okay. I think I still have some scripts attached to this that are making these guys move. Yeah, that's it. Remove those. What's this other error? Oh, um, okay, so I see. So I was doing this. I don't quite get that syntax. I copied that over. Let me just do it. Event, event. It's not right. It's not right. Um, how'd they do it?
No. No. I, I think this was right, I, um, or at least it was plausible. So it's complaining that that is not set. Did I get that right? Wave sample GUI 71. Event current. Okay. Uh, all right, let me just try that. Current is null. Okay, so that doesn't work. Um, No, that's that's the way to do it right there. Okay, so let's do input mouse position just to like that. Did I forget to attach an audio source? That's easily fixed. Easily. Easily fixed, if that's true. Yep, that is true. Alright, let's try again. Uh, let a fagando pass through a bomb me. Uh, let a fagando pass through a bomb me. The plates must be held down to let a fagando pass through a bomb me. Oh, pass through a bomb me. So, an interesting quirk is that I'm continuously uh, restarting that audio. That feels dangerous to me. You can hear it though, like I go. Oh, pass through a bomb me. When I hold down the mouse button, it continuously restarts. It goes like that. Um, let me fix that, because that's the sort of thing I just, it feels like I'm, I'm tempting fate to have it do that. Uh, let's see. So, how, how do I want to fix that? I can wait for a mouse up 
before accepting another mouse down event. So let's uh, call this. play equals true. Here, I'll immediately say ready to play equals false. Okay. So then I gotta see what what's the I could do get button down, fire one, and get button up, fire one. No, that's not what I want. Um, mouse button, unity. Mouse button. Okay, so get mouse button down, get mouse button up. Oh, I thought something else useful I could do whenever I do a mouse up. If that, this will save my sanity. Uh, audio source. Stop. Uh, let's just set this one time. Set the audio. No, I'll leave that because I might want to change the audio clip at runtime or within the editor. Okay. Let a fagando pass through a bomb me. The plate must be held down to let a fagando pass through. Something seems off with this. So, I'm clicking. Me. Yeah, something's off. Okay, the timing is not matching up to where I'm clicking. So off over here, the audio should be like down to nothing. All silence. So silence when I click here. 
and then I'm off here over in the area that should still be silence and I clicked on it and he did like the last bit of his talk oh path to a bomb me cat uh so let me think about that So suppose I click over here. I would expect this to be right up on the right edge of the screen. Let me check that. The so screen X, it's going to be the mouse position X. Eleven thirty-eight. It might be doing the position of the mouse for the whole monitor as opposed to inside of the screen. What's the screen width? 11.45 screen X no that's about right so sample percent is close to 100 yep so my play time length times sample percent what's the length 12.6 seconds so the play time should be real close real close to 12.6 seconds. What is it? Yep. Twelve point six. Okay. Let me let me go look at um, the sample inside of the audio editor to make sure I've got that part right. So the, the time is right, 12.6, the thing that's, that's not working as expected is when, is when I set the time position to be 12.6, it starts playing in a different, well maybe, maybe it's not actually, 12.6 that was probably okay as far as playing um, okay. So if I click here, here's what I expect to hear. Um, actually, let me just bring it up inside of Unity. That's even more direct. So from here, it corresponds to this part right here. Give the dog me, me, me. So me's, me's, me's. Okay, that's that's all I should hear. Um, and that position is around 11, 11 seconds, so maybe 11.1, 11.2. But it's playing from way, way back here. Let a fagando pass through a bomb maze. Instead of playing on maze. On maze. Or on maze. 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 Okay. So let me do the debugger. Debugger not going. Yeah. Oh, pass through a bomb maze. Oh, bomb through bomb maze. Okay. Okay. So, the play time I'm expecting to be eleven something. No, it went, it went much lower. Okay. So. 77% screen X, 
10, 45. So it's going to play back here somewhere. Okay, so the play clip from is correct. I'm just confused by screen X and screen width, I guess. Go path to a bomb me. Okay. So let me, uh, First, let me check the screen width. Oh, well, here it is. So that, that's saying 1139. I think it's it was 1145 inside of the code, which, okay, if you like, include a little bit of border around the side. Yeah, that checks out. So the width is correct. Screen width is expected. Oh, the code is getting a screen width size that reflects what it, it expects. Um, I guess one thing I'm seeing is if I, I look at this, it, it does seem like it's shifted over a bit. The RMS compared to this sample over here. So let me do another capture. Take it into Photoshop. the positions of these things they, they should be matching the same ratio that okay that could be a difference So the silence at the end seems to be different. What if I line these up? Okay. So the the, the ratio of the positioning of of the first part of the sample is the same. But in my chunks, there's a bunch of extra, there's a bunch of extra emptiness at the end. Uh, or it could either it could be one of two things. It could be 
that my visualization has got a mistake in it where it's it's squeezing everything in the representation a little extra to the left or it could be that all my chunk data has got some extra empty space at the end either one of the two things By the way, if if I if I just figure out how to get it to play the audio right at, at the point I click on it, I'm gonna call that the uh, the victory moment for the session. Even though I like had two other good victory moments, they just happened so quickly. Now I'm hitting a problem that's taking a little bit longer. It's the problem of playing blackjack with these sessions and taking one more thing to do. Okay. So either the representation is incorrect, it's not drawing all the way out to the right. It feels a little unlikely to me because when I had that previous sample, or that previous example of nine samples or ten samples, it drew each one of those. It drew them right to the edge. There's some kind of a oh, okay, I know I could test that. I, I know I could test that. So pretty easy. If I look at, at this doodad here, I can kind of see where the last little bit of uh, silence is. I can, I can just sort of gauge the ratio. Uh, in fact, maybe I can pop this out. Can I pop it out? doesn't want to pop out. That's fine. It doesn't have to. Um, okay, so I can kind of estimate it. Take that all the way out to the edge. This is where I think the samples are set up. I think the samples in memory, they are represented this way, or the chunks that I built are represented that way. And that means that if I click, let's say, if I'm looking at that screen, I'm at this point here, and I move over the same distance as this little group here, that should put me right here, and I should just hear the last tiny little bit of the real secret hidden away from me, but real chunks right here. So that's how I'll, I'll measure it. So I'll come back over to here. I'll say, okay, I'm going to take this, this width here as a, a reference, and move over the same amount. I'm going to click here and I expect to hear just a tiny, tiny little bit. No? It might still be in the debugger. Yes, it is. 
<coughs> yeah, so that was a tiny, tiny little bit. Do, do. Okay, and if I go over just a little bit more, empty. So that's that's it. The the chunk representation is correct. The visualization is not. I need to fix the visualization. Um, a way to make this this easier is I can artificially extend the very last chunk. So I'll say. Uh, no, not the pinks. Actually, I don't even have to modify the chunks. I can do... If I equal chunk count minus one set this to full full size that'll make a really easy reference point for me unplay save play There it is. So there's there's my issue. Um, the visualization is not. I know why. 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 Got it. So I made the mistake of making this an int. It's got to be a float. It's going to be rounding problems. So float. Okay. Kind of curious if that code changer may able to pick up here. Yeah, it did. It worked. Okay, I'm going to take out that little bit of debug code. Uh, okay, I'll get rid of this little line here. Okay. So now, moment of truth. I want to see if these tall lines correspond correspond to good loud points to put gestures at. No, no path to a bomb me. Me. Okay. So. It must be held down to let a fagando path to a bomb me. No path. So it'd be. It must be held down. To this must be held down. This must be held down. So, this feels like it might do an okay job. Um, another thing is is. Using these peaks as the starting point for decisions on where gestures could be is probably not bad. So I could refine the algorithm a little bit to say in a given I have a, I have a, a, a optimum frequency of gestures. I could say the optimum frequency is one gesture per second for example. So that in a audio like this, which is 12.6 seconds long, there'd be 12 gestures. And then I would pick the top 12 
peaks in terms of amplitude among these among these uh, these peaks here of the yellow lines. Um, let, let me say less gestures. Say one gesture every three seconds, and that would say give us four gestures in this exchange. And if that were the case, it would end up picking this one, this one, this one. Now these two are too close to each other, so I might add like some extra logic that says unless if the peaks are too close to each other, you you uh, emit an option. So then it could be like one, two, three, four. So that would mean a gesture here. Pickaxe. It was a Dalva pickaxe. So it would be like pickaxe, pickaxe, the hand moving with the pickaxe. 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 And then go a little bit further, and we get to what's this thing? Four piles of rubble. Form four pi four four four, pi four piles of rubble. Four piles of rubble. And then what's this one? It must be held down. The plates must be held down. Plates must be held down. Plates must be held down. Gesture. Plates must be held down. Okay. And then this last one. No path to a bomb. The fagando. Fagando. I can see it working. I can see it working. There's definitely um, reasonable information here to begin crafting an algorithm around. I think I'm in a good place. So, my mind's spinning a little bit with like what I next want to do, but I don't want to say anything that it's, it's like bad luck for my psychology to say the next thing I want to do, because then that means like uh, I haven't concluded it in the session. This is a victory point. This is a good stopping point. This is where I end the session happily, with satisfaction, with contentment. Feeling good. All right. If you join me for this session, I do appreciate it. Uh, you'll find it keep a pretty regular schedule. It was posted right at the beginning. I think it's also like on my Twitch channel someplace. Uh, so definitely uh, join me at one of the regular times if, if you'd like to get in on this whole business. Okay. Stop in the stream. Stop in the stream. Stop in the stream.